Welcome to this episode of Just One Thing. Today I'm going to talk about PowerShell and how you can use it to uh, manage your Windows Azure services. My name is Adam Gerholsky and I'm a technical evangelist with RBA Consulting. I don't have a lot of slides for this one, but just one to highlight a couple, uh, a few bullet points anyway about uh, Windows Azure and how it uh, plays with PowerShell. So Microsoft has released the Windows Azure Service Management Commandlets. If you're not used to that term, command, commandlets, it's a, a term often used in PowerShell to kind of describe um, buckets of functionality or kind of groups of functionality, if you will. These commandlets really do nothing more than wrap the REST uh, API, the management API for Windows Azure, as well as uh, the diagnostics API. So if you don't like using REST, these uh, PowerShell commandlets are a great way to interact and, and automate many of the things you can do with Azure um, from more of a .NET uh, perspective. What it really allows you to do, uh, one thing you can do is uh, build some very sophisticated deployment scripts. So for example, if you use uh, continuous integration with tools like Team Foundation Server, you could use Windows Azure and, and PowerShell to basically kind of package up the output of your builds and automatically deploy them to Azure as part of your build process. You can also use these uh, commandlets to monitor and manage your Windows Azure application so you could easily kind of suspend deployments, delete deployments, increase it, um, the number of instances running, etc. And of course, since it's PowerShell, um, it, it works with the rest of the .NET CLR. So you're not, when you're using PowerShell, of course, you can call out to other .NET APIs as well um, to, to really kind of increase the sophistication of your scripts. As um, one of my friends put it, really PowerShell is kind of the .NET command line. To get these commandlets and start using PowerShell with Azure, you just go to wappowershell.coplex.com, uh, download, install, and start coding. So with that, I'm actually going to kind of end the slides here and get to a demo. So the first thing I mentioned you need to do uh, if you want to use PowerShell with Windows Azure is to get the commandlets. And you'll see here I'm at wappowershell.coplex.com where I can download the latest commandlets. If I click Downloads, you'll actually see you have a couple of options. Um, you have the PowerShell commandlet, so that's version 2.0. That's what we'll be dealing with today. Um, but there's also another one. If, if you scroll down here, there's one for ACS. So if you use the Access Control Service uh, to secure and you know provide identity in your applications, there's actually a set of commandlets for that as well. But we won't be using those today. We're going to focus on the uh, 2.0 version of the commandlets for the Azure platform. So let's close this. The other thing I want to call out quickly, just so we'll, we can kind of watch what's going on here. Uh, I'm in Azure. I'm in the management portal at the moment. I'm looking at a deployment. And you'll see here I actually have a deployment out and running. And what we're going to do uh, with our with our PowerShell commandlets today, is we're actually gonna we're actually gonna t delete this deployment uh, programmatically from a script. So we'll close this for now, and then the next thing we'll want to use is the PowerShell ISE. So if you haven't used PowerShell before, don't don't be afraid. I haven't used it that much either uh, until I started working with Azure. Uh, the PowerShell ISE, ISE stands for Integrated Scripting Environment. And what's nice about this environment is that it allows me to actually kind of set breakpoints in code, do some of the things I'm used to doing with Visual Studio. Now it's not nearly as robust, but it's a nice little scripting environment. I can't really kind of do this PowerShell development within Visual Studio. So I use the ISE uh, to, to write these scripts for Azure. All right, so once I've kind of downloaded downloaded those commandlets, installed them, and I've got the ISE running, I'm actually start, I'm ready to start writing my script. Sorry about that. So now the first thing you see, I've got an empty script here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a comment in just so we know kind of what our goal is today. Here's our comment. You notice my comments start with the hashtag. So this is going to suspend and remove uh, the current production deployment. That's all we're going to do. Now the first thing I need to do and working with these commandlets uh, for Azure is to actually kind of add them in the session or kind of add a PowerShell snap in. You'll see here what the syntax looks like. And this becomes available to you. Why don't we blow that up just a little bit more? There we go. So this add PS snap in, these Azure management tool snap in, that gets installed on your machine once you install those commandlets. 
So now that I have kind of the PowerShell bits available to me for Azure, uh, what I need to do is first specify kind of what uh, account I'm going to be working with in Azure. So which services am, am I going to be working with? But to do that, I actually need to specify a certificate. So if we go back to the portal for a moment, you'll see here, um, in order to use PowerShell and Azure and kind of do all this automated management, I actually need to install some management certificates. And you'll see I've just got a ton of them here. But I want to use one in particular. So this script, notice the thumbprint here. So that's the script, I, I or the not the script, but the certificate I want to use in order to, uh, as part of my PowerShell script. So that, that certificate will allow my script to execute against the Azure environment. So let's go back to the ISE. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get that certificate. So I say get item, cert, and I just specify the path to that cert, um, kind of the certificate store. So it's, it's my store under the current user. And here is the cert itself, or the thumbprint for the cert. So now that I have the cert I want to use, the next thing I need to do is specify um, which subscription I'll be working with and which service within the subscription. So let me drop those in. And actually, before I drop those in, why don't I show you where those are? So let's go back to the portal here, I'll go into my hosted services. So I'm going to be working with this Think First Code Later subscription. And you'll see here I have a subscription ID. So I need that. Of course, that's the subscription I'll be working with. I also need the particular service name. So here's the name of the service I'll be working with, Heartland DC. Very simple. So to drop those in, I'm just going to put those in variables as well. So let's bring those in. Notice variables in PowerShell start with that dollar sign. So here, here's my subscription ID right here, and here's my service name. So the next thing I need to do, so now I've got kind of all the credentials I need. The next thing I need to do is actually perform some actions. So what I want to do is delete this deployment. I basically just want to take it out of commission so I'm no longer paying for it. You can't just directly delete something. You have to suspend it, and then once it's suspended, remove it. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So the first thing I want to do is suspend the deployment. Here's the script for that. Pretty simple. Once again, my service name, my certificate, and my subscription, which are all specified up here. I then have to specify a deployment slot. So if we go back to the portal, you'll see here this is actually in the production slot, production. So I specify production, then I set the status to suspend it, and I wait for it to complete, because I want this to complete, because once it's done, then I can go ahead and remove the deployment. So let's uh, um, add that script. So here we go, we're going to remove the deployment here. Once again, very similar in terms of getting the service based on the service name, cert, and subscription production slot once again and, and instead of setting the status this time I just call remove deployment and of course I wait for it to complete. Now the last thing I want to do it's kind of good etiquette in PowerShell I guess I'm not a PowerShell guru so I'll just take uh, other people that their word for it. I want to remove that snapping so if I had another session running you know it's, it's all cl cleared out so I don't kind of have these sessions uh, overriding each other. So from there we're pretty much ready to go. So I can run this by just clicking run script. So this nice little green arrow here, or if you're used to it in Visual Studio, you can simply press F5. And this can this can take a little while to run. But let's uh, let's go back to the portal and see what's going on. There we go, it just flipped over to stopping. So our first step is in progress is is actually stopping and you'll see here now now you'll get this little window pop up because we're dealing with Azure and it takes a while for it to complete so we'll just kinda let this run for a minute shouldn't take too long though uh, and then once we actually stop we'll actually move to deleting and we can go to the portal again see where we're at so it's stopping right now still stopping And there and then it actually deleted as well so it stopped and then deleted instantly and you'll see here we're done both both succeeded and as you as you notice here I now have no deployments here so I'm not being charged for anything 
And that's it for this installment of Just One Thing. Hopefully, uh, with this really quick demo, you see just uh, some of the, the possibilities of what you can do using PowerShell and Windows Azure.